challenge will be to keep you guys awake after this great lunch that we just had. So it'll be, it'll be difficult, but I'll do my best. Um, Everton Sands, the Vice President of Research at CLASS. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I want to just say thank you to InterSystems uh, for the, their gracious invitations and allowing us to come here and participate on, on this great customer event. We get a chance to speak at different events um, for different vendors, and it's also a treat to, for us to be with uh, the customers and, and with you and learn from you and, and, and what makes you successful or some of the challenges that you may have as well. So I appreciate it. we appreciated the, the opportunity to be here. Um, I, last night, I was uh, uh, meeting with some of you and met today as well, and uh, I realized that most of you know class, but a few may not have heard. I was just having a lunch, a lunch today with a group of uh, customers, and they have not heard of class. So I thought maybe to spend just a, a second here to, to tell you what class does and wh who we are. Uh, um, uh, we are an independent research firm in, in healthcare IT. Our specialty is really focused on the customer experience. Uh, we uh, measure 400 plus different um, vendors in our database uh, across 900 or so different products and services they sell to hospitals and clinics from around the world. Uh, so for us, it's uh, really uh, providing unbiased, impartial insights and data to enable healthcare provider executives to make better informed decisions. So uh, that's a little bit about class. I thought before I start my, my discussion on the clinician experience, uh, to talk about uh, research that we recently published, um, where we talked about 180 hospitals from around the world, about uh, the top priority, what's keeping them up at night in terms of investment, what, what innovations they wanted to invest in. And the underlying factor was around EMR digitalization. Those are things like EMR implementation, uh, EMR selection, um, optimization, document management. It's the underlying factor that the EMR, the EHR, are it's, uh, in the front front of uh, many minds of uh, healthcare leaders. And I'll be using the, the, the term EMR, e, e, EHR, and HIS intertwined. I just want to make sure that that's the same. Uh, it's some sort of electronic record uh, system that allows uh, to document fish, physician encounter and the prescription uh, and CPOE. So that's what I, what I mean by EMR and EHR is the same thing. So, so seeing our, our data, our investments, what's, uh, what's driving investment, uh, and this is data we did over the last year, and we, where we ask where uh, over the next 12 to 18 months they would like to invest. So we, we thought, okay, thank goodness for EMRs. Uh, back in the day, we, or maybe even today, we may have some organizations that are using paper uh, and, and we have not really adopted some sort of electronic health record to document patients um, and, and improve the liver care. So thanks good for EMRs. The adoption of EMR, it's a great thing, but also uh, it led to an inadvertent problem in the industry where it caused physician burnout. Uh, and it's cost the industry a lot of money. Uh, we, it is estimated that it costs annually about $4.6 billion in physician burnout. That's when physicians get tired and they just leave the field or do something else and it causes a lot of turnover. So a class, what we learn is that if you measure something and you focus on, you can improve. So what you measure, you focus on, and what you focus on, you improve. So we decided about seven years ago to measure the satisfaction of physicians, nurses, allied profession, health professionals, to better understand is the EMR really enable them to provide a higher quality of care? So we created an initiative branded as the Arch Collaborative, which is essentially a nutshell. It's uh, an opportunity for us to understand from the end users whether or not the, 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 the EMR is really enabling them to provide better quality of care. Is it causing burnout like we have seen it? Is it causing physicians to change the industry or live in the field? So the Arch Collaborative, it's an initiative uh, provide led initiative that class is organized. We have deployed this across 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1,000 organizations. Um, and we have uh, their data, it's very deep, to 380,000 clinicians have participated. This is a confidential, safe, nobody sees your results but you. We don't publish. Uh, and it's really a way for us to understand from an end user perspective whether or not the EMR is meeting the needs uh, of your clinicians. Uh, we have deployed this across 12 different countries. It takes about 
five to eight minutes, depending on how fast you go to complete the online questionnaire survey. And, and it's about 35 questions. I am showing over here a few of the questions that we ask. Uh, the, the top part, it's uh, more on the technology aspect of it. The, bottom, uh, the middle part is more on the functionality. And then the other one is focusing more on the patients. And one of the questions that we ask is, do you agree that your EHR or EMR, and then the following. Some of the questions I'm going to focus to you. Does it enable you to deliver high quality of care? Does it really keep your patient safe? Is it allowing you to deliver patient-centered care? So when we look at these questions, we think about it, can we really buy your success? Because there's a notion in the market oftentimes that if I buy the most expensive EMR, then there's going to be a guarantee that I'll have a successful program, therefore my end users will be satisfied. In our data, and we have done this more than 300,000, um, our sample it has shown that's no. And this is a very compelling chart. Each blue line represents one healthcare provider organization that have participated with us. The lines that are connected, they are, they are different organizations, but they are using the same technology, the same EHR. So why is it that the organization is up in the top, in the 90 percentile in satisfaction? Why are they rating so high, whereas organizations at the bottom, maybe in the 25, 30 percentile, and they're using the same technology? What's causing this variation? Why they were seeing that uh, technically they should be going through the same similar implementation, workflow, training? W what's causing these variations? And this is a sample of about 48,000. So uh, keep in mind, 240 or so different organizations. So wh wh what we learn is that the technology, though it's an important piece, it's not the driving factor. So what it is really causing this variation? Where does the variation in EHR experience come from? So, what we have learned is that about 70% of healthcare organizations and clinicians account for EHR success. So, that's your governance piece, and that's your end user experience, your education. And third, about 10% is the technology piece, so the, 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 whichever EHR vendor that you may be leveraging today in your institution. So though the technology, is, it, it does play a, a factor, but it's not the leading contributing factor for EHR satisfaction. It's really the, within, in, within your organizations. So we call the EHR house of success. There's three pillars to build really a, a house that's strong. And that's the, you share ownership, that's your governance piece, the alignment that cannot be, oftentimes we see that uh, an implementation is an IT project that the clinical team are not really involved, or maybe administration is not really involved, so the shared ownership is an important pillar. The other one is around the strong user mastery, that's your ongoing education. John and Dimitri, they talk about the importance of education, and uh, we work with a lot of vendors, and uh, InterSystems has a voracity for customer satisfaction, and they work closely with class to really understand what's driving customer success and what are the opportunities for improvement. So really the user mastery, the education, the training is another pillar. And finally, really meeting the user needs. That's your personalization. Three key pillars that help you to understand what drives satisfaction around your clinicians. So let's talk about the first one around training and education. What makes you great? So this is our data that really showing the EHR education and personalization are the key fundamental things for an uh, a, a, satisfaction to be higher in our organization. So, one of the things that we have uncovered, some of the best practices, and I hope that you take this as you go to your organizations, okay, let's try to implement this, some of these best practices. What we learned that a clinician learns better from another clinician. How often should you do a training? What type of training should it be? Should it be elbow training? Formal training? Should it be a one-on-one? -on -one? Should it be online? in person, and we learned that all of that a combination is all those factors. But it's important to really to train in context of the patient care, looking for the opportunities to really, okay, let's put the patients at the center of everything. And then tailor your message accordingly and demonstrate the return on investment by implementing these training practices 
your administration, your executive team may be able to see, okay, this is something that we have to focus on. So maybe have some acclimation uh, uh, testimonial and say, hey, this is, this is a training I went to, it's important. And also dedicated training time. What we have learned is that oftentimes when an implementation is done, the training is done at the inception, and maybe you have a new hire, new nurse, a new doctor, and then you get that person trained, and oftentimes we see there's no ongoing training or follow-up. So the, it's critical to have an ongoing training. And what we have learned, our data has shown that it doesn't have to be long training, long training sessions, five to 15 minutes, maybe you dedicated three to five hours a year. So not very long for ongoing education because the technology evolves. You will upgrade new systems, there's new practices. And some of the things that we are learning over the last 12 to 18 months, we incorporated a new question to our ARCH data that show to better understand whether or not EHR upgrades contribute to EMR usability and satisfaction. And what we have learned is that it is an important piece of your digital transformation because EAP upgrades keeps you up with the regulation. It, it really expands your functionality and increases efficiency. Uh, so our, our data has showed that, uh, let me see if you can show, this is two data points I want to share. The odds of agreeing that a recent upgrade improve the user experience. So the first one is around EHR education, um, and the other one is around the specific workflow training. So people that are going through these upgrades, they strongly agree, A, as we go through these upgrades, our satisfaction has increased over uh, this period that we have gone through this. So, some of the best practices that we share around EHR upgrade, I, I've been with class for about seven years and I have spoken to numerous healthcare providers from around the world. And uh, I, I cannot tell you how many times I, I have heard providers telling me, hey, um, I asked, how's your experience with your uh, EMR A or, or B or C, whichever the case may be. And say, oh, we just recent, went to, we recently went through an upgrade and you're not gonna believe everything that we had downtime, it wasn't announced, we did not really know, and this is a doctor talking to me. We didn't really know that the upgrade was going and I was trying to document my, my patient encounter. And I couldn't because it was, the system was down. And the reason why is because they were going through an upgrade and they didn't know. So communication is key. Uh, it's very critical to, to communicate and I really allow the end user to test that before it really goes live. And phasing out outdated additions uh, uh, or uh, releases, it's important too. So communication creates some of the best practices that we, what we have learned. So now, as we move from an educational perspective and training, uh, I want to share with you some, some things around personalization. I, I have a, a smartphone here. Uh, most of us have a smartphone and we utilize it. What if we start using our smartphone out of the box and we didn't personalize it. I have my smartphone, I have put in my apps for sports, for news, for work, for, for social media, for my books that I like to read. So I, I really personalize my, my smartphone to meet my needs and I may share similar apps that you may have. Maybe we have a WhatsApp app that allows us for communication. I'm just giving a simple example. But mine may be on the front page, they may, yours might be on the second page. So really, at the end of the day, we're accomplishing the same thing, but we're, we personalize it differently. And it's the same thing with that EMR. You have to, the users have to understand that personalizing to cater to their own needs is, is critical uh, to their uh, satisfaction. So our data has shown that uh, organizations that have high levels of EHR personalization uh, usually are above average, 81%, above average. Uh, in our net experience EMR score. The other key piece that leading from a personalization is the governance, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier today. Uh, and healthcare providers come to us and uh, when they're about to make a decision, and they say, Everton, we are considering EMR A, B, and C. Helps us to understand from your data what you're hearing from other customers. And and oftentimes, when we go through that process and help them to understand, one of the critical points is say, hey, so are you working this alone or you have a team that's working with you? And oftentimes, it's an IT-led project. An EMR implementation, what we have learned is more likely to be successful if it's a cohesive, 
collaborative effort uh, from the IT team, the administration, your executive team, and your clinical team. So the user mastery, the, the, really the, the trust that your users have in your leadership is critical. So this data ascertains that clinicians trust in the organization when it comes to EHR. So this is showing our net EMR experience scores. It goes from negative 100 to a positive 100. So uh, uh, in, these are people that are uh, agreeing that the, the organization, the IT leadership delivers well, meaning that they are well connected, they're well in sync, that they are aligned. So our sample uh, uh, shows, it's fa fairly, the data is fairly deep. There's 100, and I think if my math serves me right, there's 120 or so uh, points in difference from the people they strongly agree to strongly disagree in that EMR experience score, whether or not they have uh, trust in their leadership team. So in other words, if you're scoring down the below, you have zero confidence in the leadership team that they are working together to provide a better experience. So that's another important factor. It's having that alignment uh, among the clinicians, IT team, and the executive team to make sure that that's a, a collaborative effort for your organization to really drive um, physician or clinician satisfaction. So in summary, the three pillars of, for EHR success, it comes down to Training, that's your expert user. It comes down to governance, that's your shared ownership, and then personalization. I have spoke with a few of you um, about this uh, initiative that class does. We would love to have this um, uh, implemented more here in Southeast Asia. Our call to action is that come and join the Arch Collaborative. If you have not learned about it much, please look into that. 98% of the organizations that participated with us have seen significant improvement in EHR satisfaction. It's important for you to do your own uh, survey internally, but you really don't have a way to benchmark to see how you're doing against other, for example, uh, TRICARE customers or other uh, EMR vendors. So our call to action is if you do some sort of analysis or measurement inside within your organization to understand the adoption the satisfaction, is it bringing the ROI that you're looking for? Because remember, what you measure, you focus on. And what you focus on, you improve. Thank you so much.